At first glance when watching the Mad Max movies, all you can really see is a desolate and inhospitable deserty landscape that the movie's protagonist, Mac Rogatansky, and other wastelanders are forced to scrape a meager existence from. It may come to the conclusion that you just can't find any food out there and that only the strongest and wisest will be able to survive in this environment. And you'd be partially correct, at least in my own opinion. You write about only the strongest and wisest being able to survive, but it's wisdom that will be able to help you locate sources of food and strength that you'd have to utilize to keep you moving forward in order to obtain it. So I've created a basic list of food sources that are available to the Wastelanders after the first Mad Max movie released in 1971. This list is in no specific order, but in today's video I will not be going over any beverages or drinks in the Mad Max universe because I'll be saving that for a future video. If you enjoy what you see during this video, then please leave a like, and if you have any food sources that I may have missed, then please let me know down in the comments. If you're into this sort of content, then feel free to subscribe to my channel. Thank you. All right, so let's go over this list. First, we have plant life that consists of three separate sources, such as wild edibles, vegetable crops, and fruit crops. Next are the sources of meat that are wild animals, farmed animals, and it's hard to say it, but human flesh. Next, we got our insects, and these are both from wild and farmed sources. Finally, we have the ideal food that's rarely found across the wastes, especially in later Mad Max movies, and that is canned goods. Now, I'll be talking about where these foods would most likely come from within the Mad Max universe, and all this is from my own understanding and conclusions after watching the Mad Max movies, also from playing the 2015 video game, so I'll make sure to put all my sources in the video description down below. First, we're going to be talking about wild edibles, and these are plants that can be harvested across the more hospitable areas of the wasteland that have an actual plant life. Now, not many areas in the Mad Max universe are anything shy of a dried up hulk of deserty dunes where you're more likely to catch a stray bullet than spot anything green for miles. Wild edibles will only be able to be found by those with survival knowledge like the hunter-gatherer children of the Lost Tribe from Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome, released in 1985. The Lost Tribe are people who dwell in a desert oasis led by Savannah Nix, one of the eldest members of the tribe. The oasis is far away from other locations which makes it a relatively safe place to live, but its dangerous surrounding desert that's filled with quicksand and also the heat from the sun has left it untouched by other wastelanders, at least until the arrival of the story's protagonist, Max. The next place I believe that has wild edibles would be the mountaintops of Immortan Joe's Citadel in the Mad Max Fury Road released in 2015. The Citadel sits atop a freshwater reserve which has allowed plants to grow as they utilize the fresh water and aren't using irradiated dirty water found elsewhere like the Green Place, also from the Fury Road, which is now just a dark and murky swamp. We don't get to see up close what kinds of wild plants are on top of the Citadel, so I'm only just assuming that there are edible plants on the mountain and cannot confirm it. But I was drawn to this conclusion after I had seen the flourishing green plant life after watching the movie. Farms and crops are the best source for all sorts of planty goodness and are only found where there are settlements able enough to tend to them. But because of their resource needs as well as needing proper soil for its growth, they aren't common for the average wastelander to obtain as most people are scavenging nomads who go from one place to another. The average wastelander, frankly put, just isn't equipped enough to create their own humble farms. The reason the average person cannot just make a a farm or crop is because of the immense danger that comes from roaming bandits who could stumble upon them after passing nearby. This could be for many reasons, like they see the lights coming from their huts or farmhouse, or maybe a farmer has placed his farm near one of the only places capable of sustaining plant life which would attract others. Any humble farmer would also easily be able to be taken advantage of and quickly robbed or killed for what they've got. And this is known to most wastelanders who decide to settle down permanently, like the father and son pilot duo from Mad Max Beyond Thunderdome. They're Wisdom brought them to create an underground home where they can store what they need out of sight, as well as staying out of sight from passing bandits and shelter from the sun above, at least until they too ran into Max. Now with all of that said, you can still start a farm if you are in a hidden enough location or have enough manpower to defend against attackers like the ruthless auntie entity of Bartertown who has bowls of fruit, but it would be safe to assume that not everyone in Bartertown would be able to eat them because they might just be too expensive and too precious to hand out freely. I assume that they bought it for water needed for the crops because it isn't clear, at least to me, that there's any water nearby. They could also be utilizing the abundant fecal matter used in their methane refinery that turns pig poop into energy and fuel. This would help whatever soil they've been able to procure and turn it 
into a stable and fertilized soil for the growth of their fruit. Now, next we have a Morton Joe in the Citadel that we mentioned before, and they don't only have access to wild edibles, but also a flourishing hydroponics farm that uses fresh water from the aquifer to allow them to grow their leafy greens. Unfortunately, I believe this too would only have been given to people they deem important enough to have it. Otherwise, it would be traded to the nearby settlements of Gastown for fuel and the bullet farm for ammunition. A good source of protein is hard to come by with many different groups of people being able to obtain different kinds and this would all depend on their status or even the location where they choose to live. The Lost Tribe are a good example of a group of people who are able to obtain a decent supply of meat that is shown by their tanned hide clothing and their bird feather decorations. Personally, I have never seen any deers or bison or anything like that around and by the looks of it, the tribe's people only have small patches of leather and fur. So I believe this could be from wild dogs or wolves and that the feathers could come from the carrion birds seen throughout the movies. In the Fury Road installment, in the opening scene we could see Max sense a nearby two-headed lizard thing quickly crawling past, but not quick enough as it meets the bottom of Max's boot and is eaten without being gutted. This shows us that there are different kinds of wildlife out there, but only a small amount and are usually those who feed off of corpses or were once man's best friend. Some animals like monkeys, horses, and camels are either used for entertainment or transportation and for some reason are expendable. I say this because because Max was placed on a horse that was sent out into the desert when he was given the gulag sentence for backing out of the deal with Auntie Entity. A great example are the pigs in the Barter Town methane refinery that are no doubt also being used as a source of meat once they've outlived their usefulness creating methane. This source of meat won't be given to just anyone, and if you want some, you better have the coin. A scene in the movie, to kill one of these pigs without permission will give you a life sentence of shoveling their poop in the refinery. I assume that one or two shops in Barter Town might have a deal with Auntie Entity to sell their meat if they give her a cut of the profits, but I can't be too sure. The guards also appear to be quite fit and strong, so I also believe if you are hired muscle that you'll be paid with meat and fruit. In Mad Max 2 The Road Warrior, released in 1981, the oil refinery led by Papagallo has a few different animals in its care such as pigs and chickens. I also spotted a rabbit running around inside, but it wasn't in any enclosure so I cannot be too sure if it was a farm source of meat or if it was a wild rabbit like the one killed by Wes, and that it had only found its way inside the compound. This settlement appears to be cautious of others but still willing to accept trade from nomads, and I also assume that they might trade the eggs, chicken, and pig meat for whatever it is that they need making this settlement one of the easier places to obtain protein, at least when there's no hordes of marauders outside. Lastly, we got human meat. This one is kind of self-explanatory on where it comes from, but if for some reason it's not obvious enough, it comes from humans. Perhaps you've been wandering in the wasteland for months with very little to eat and you come across another person or corpse. Nobody can predict what a hungry person will do when they're pushed to their absolute limits. And in the Mad Max universe, these people who indulge in human meat are labeled as feral. Insects are another source of protein and are probably more common for people who don't have access to animals like pigs or chickens, like those who live at the base of a Morton Joe Citadel. But I wouldn't put it past anyone in the Mad Max universe to chomp down a few of these creepy crawlies in their times of need. Just like when the little bug crawled onto Nux's finger and then he casually ate it soon after. Now, one insect farm I had come across that was eyebrow raising was during my first playthrough of the Mad Max 2015 video game when I, like many others, were hungry and stumbled upon our very first corpse. Upon closer inspection of these corpses, you can see that a mess of maggots are thriving in the body's open and rotting guts, where Max then has the option to grab a handful and fill his belly. A little bit of a spoiler alert here, but later on in the game, Max can do a side quest where he has to obtain the materials needed to create a maggot farm, where the corpses of the dead are chopped up and left to rot in order to build up a steady stream of maggots that are then harvested as a food source. Personally, I wonder if this makes you a secondhand cannibal or not because you're eating the maggots that came from a human corpse, but I guess that's better than eating the corpse itself. Last on the list is a quick one and that's canned goods. There won't be much of these laying around as most pre-apocalypse buildings are buried beneath the sands and even looted decades past, leaving most of resort to farm goods or even hunted and gathered foods as well. Although in The Road Warrior, Max is seen eating a can of the iconic Dinky D's dog food that I assume is probably long past its expiration date, but probably far better tasting than anything else available. All right, everyone, that's all I got for you for today. And I just want to say thank you so much for sticking with me this long. And if I missed anything, please let me know down below. Um, if you enjoyed the content, please drop a like and feel free to subscribe. All right, have a good one. Deuces.